Hello and welcome to my podcast. This episode is the first in the series of applying to universities in the UK using the UCAS.com portal. So just a bit of background about myself. I have a Bachelor's of Science, so BSc in Natural Sciences from the UK University. And I also have a Master's, uh, so an MSc in Nutrition, also from a UK University. And this episode will be focusing on how to apply for undergrad courses in the uh, in the UK. So this is for all undergrad courses, and I'll just be going through the brief overview of the UCAS.com website. So that's UCAS as in UCAS.com. I'm also a medical student in Poland, so in future video, uh, sorry, future episodes, you will be um, hearing from me about how to apply for medical school in Poland, how to apply for medical school in in the UK, how to apply for natural sciences, so the degree that I did, and a bit of introduction about what natural sciences is, and I will also mention how to um, apply for postgrad degrees in the UK. So if you are interested, you can keep listening to this uh, podcast. If not, you can you, have, you can search the UCAS.com website in your own free time and uh, you, can, you can make up your decision based on that. So just a brief introduction about the UCAS website. So it stands for Universities and Colleges Admin, Admission Services. And it's a UK-based organisation whose main role is to operate the application process for British universities. So UCAS provides a lot of services that include online application portals, several search search tools where you can search for your undergrad courses, you can search for postgrad courses, and you can search for like apprenticeship courses as well. And it also has free information and advice directed at various audiences such as students considering higher education, students who have pending application to higher education students, parents and legal guardians of applicants, uh, as well as like school and further education staff involved in helping students apply and also for providers of higher education. Now, um, the one of the reasons I started this uh, podcast episode as well is to help international students apply for uh, UK universities using UCAS because um, the support for interference might not be necessarily available in the school that they're at. So I hope that this website will be useful, um, you know, for you to, um, sorry, yeah, this podcast rather, not the website, will be useful for helping students make up their decision if they want to study in the, U- uh, in the UK as well. Um, UCAS also has information on like Student finance, like any loans and funding that might help you study in the UK as well, because the UK is, is pricey, so you want to get as much help as you can uh, to be able to afford to live there. So, whilst UCAS is best known for its undergrad application service, that's the main UCAS scheme, it also operates a number of other services. So, it uh, there's UCAS Conservatoires, which application is an application and ser- service for performing arts at the UK Conservatoire. So UK uh, Conservatoires are basically like UK-based music schools that train um, and like study and research um, of music. They they tend to do that. Um, you can also use UCAS to apply for teacher training courses. So that's a post teacher training scheme. You can also use UCAS to apply for some postgrad uh, as well as like search um, for postgrad courses so but again um, for UK for postgrad study I will mention more about that in my future future um, episodes um, so like I said you can use UCAS to apply for um, a search uh, for courses rather and then apply for that the courses that you need you want to apply for you can also find out about events like open days that uh, the university has that the universities have, uh, but I think for, for that I would recommend going to the actual university webpage because that's how you have to book to go to the open day. Now, if you can't go for the open days, fear not. A lot of universities now have virtual open days, so you will be able to view virtual uh, videos either on YouTube or at like the university website on things like the campus, the accommodation, um, and also 
hopefully some of the buildings as well at the universities. I found that Google Map was also a very great tool on uh, viewing my campus, uh, sorry, viewing the university that I ended up going to, just to like uh, see where everything is, so like things like shops, where the nearest like supermarkets were in, um, in relation to the university, what the area looked like on street view, as well as the eagle eyed view. So Google Maps, um, again, use that as well if you can't make it for the open day. So one thing that I would mention before I start talking about the application process on UCAS is to make sure that you know when the deadlines are. Uh, some courses have different deadlines and many are a long time in advance of the start of the course. Uh, this is to make sure that, uh, you know, if the course has interviews or things like courses like medicine, veterinary and dentistry and um, courses. Uh, um, and if you want to apply for Oxford and Cambridge, you have to apply really early. Um, so usually uh, you have to apply in October for medicine veterinary and, and dentistry courses, also for Cambridge and Oxford, like for all the courses in Oxford, Cambridge, you had to apply by like the second week of October. This year, the deadline um, for the 2023 entry is on the 15th of October, 2022 at 6pm UK time. And um, I know this podcast might be a bit too late for some people, but if you already have your UCAT results, and if you've done the BMAT and the GAMSAT, there's nothing stopping you from applying for 2023 entry, so do go ahead. Um, you can also add choices to the different deadline uh, later, but just make sure that you might not actually uh, be able to apply. Uh, um, because these courses that have the early option dates are very competitive um, and they need uh, the students need to be given like some time to actually prepare for the interviews that are involved in these like competitive courses. So again, just check with your university, you know, if they got vacancies. So if we do end up applying a bit later, you know, you might be able to um, get an interview back. So the 25th of January 2023 is the deadline for more majority of other courses um, for 2023 entry. So that's courses that do not include medicine, dentistry, veterinary, or courses to uh, Oxford and Cambridge. Again, this is for undergrad um, applications. From postgrads, that's a bit of a different process, and I'll speak about that in my up, uh, next episode. So, um, yeah, that's just the main thing. So, is any your priority to try and uh, apply as soon as possible? If you're still thinking about applying for courses, you can still apply after the 30th of June, but that means that you are uh, entered into clearing. Now, clearing is a process um, what um, is it's a process that universities use to fill any places that they still have on their courses. So from like the 5th of July until the 18th of July, you can apply for a course using clearing. If you're or not already holding an offer from a university or a college and the course still has places, so again, you can only use clearing if you're applying after the 30th of June. If you didn't receive any offers or none that you want to accept. If you didn't meet the conditions of your offers, so you didn't have the relevant qualifications or the grades. Or if you paid the multiple cho choice application fee of £26.50. And you also declined your firm place. So mention what the firm place is. Uh, so basically, once you've applied for the universities and you've heard back from them, if you've heard back with more than, uh, if you heard back from like more than two universities, you can choose one as your, the, as the university that you really want to go to, that's called your firm choice. Then you also have your insurance choice, which is a university that you don't mind going to if you don't get the grades for your firm choice. Now, obviously not everyone will get their choice, um, will get their offer, some people won't get any offer at all, in which case you'll go into clearing automatically. Um, if you only have the one offer, then that will be your firm offer. So that's just a bit about the um, um, firm offers. So if you have any questions so far, just like 
message me afterwards, I'll be able to help you out. If not, again, do check out the ucast.com website. Um, it has all the information that I want to mention uh, now, plus more as well. So once you figured out what course you want to do and what university you want to go to, uh, you start with your registration with UCAS. So again, UCAS.com is the website and you've got to like complete the registration questions, including like confirming the year you want to start your studies and that you're interested in the undergraduate level of study. Uh, then you'll be taken to the UCAS hub dashboard where you'll see a title called your application. You just then click start to begin your application. So when you're completing your application, just make sure that you enter your first name and middle names exactly as they are stated on official documents like passport, birth certificate or driving license. If you uh, only have just the one name, um, just enter it both the first name and last name in the fields of the application. Uh, it is also possible to apply in Welsh, which is one of the languages spoken in Wales, which is in the UK. Uh, you can make your application entirely in Welsh. You just got to change the language to Welsh in the preference area of your profile. Now, for those who have characters, uh, especially European characters in their names, you can use some of their uh, characters in your personal details. Um, you just got to like check out the uh, you can make you just gotta realize that sometimes they will be substituted into the UK equivalent character. So in this case, UCAS has a, a PDF on the excellent character sets for the um, for more details. So once you register your interest, um, this process to minutes you can take your time over. You don't really need to rush it um, because obviously if you're still like um, looking at courses and looking at universities, you don't, you know, you're not quite sure yet, you don't have to rush it obviously. So the next step after you're registering your details is you've got to complete your details. So you just, there are some key points to this completing section. So you've got to complete all the mandatory questions and you can't skip any sections. So you've got to make sure you do this before you send off your application. Uh, again, you don't know how to do it all at once. You can sign in and save your progress uh, as you're going along. And make sure your email address is always on day, up to date, so you don't miss any up important updates on your application. Um, your CAS will also ask for your residency status. So if you're from outside the UK and you need clarification on this, um, you've got to visit the UK CESA website for more information on um, higher education, uh, like your um, residency statement. Uh, but basically, if you live in the UK, if you've got the British uh, citizen status, then you apply as a UK student. Uh, but basically, if you're from outside the UK, uh, or if you do still live in the UK, but your residency is like also, you, you know, you have to like state. Uh, different thing. So there are also questions specifically for UK students. So these are the questions about ethnic origin, national identity and occupational background. These are mandatory questions and they're used for monitoring purposes. This information will only be shared with the universities and colleges after you have secured a place and it, it will not influence any decisions regarding your application. So when you actually sign up for UCAS and you entered your some of your details you get given a UCAS ID and that ID is what will be used to um, use on your application so once you submit your application the universities only will know you by your UCAS ID so they won't know any details about you they'll just know your UCAS ID and that you applied for the for that course at the university so UCAS also asks information about personal circumstances so things like if your parents have been to university, if you've been in care, or if you're involved in widening participation activities. So the universities can form a more complete understanding of you as an individual. This info is optional, but it can help universities and colleges get a better understanding of your background and they can provide support if necessary. So usually this support tends to be like 
bursaries or scholarships that um, might help with um, uh, with the university applic uh, with making your like um, university life more um, manageable. Um, so do check that out as well. So if you're applying with the support of your school and you didn't enter your password during registration, you've got to make sure that you can enter this before you submit your application. This is just to make sure that your application will be linked to your school and they can track your progress and provide, provide support, including adding your references. Now, obviously, if you are not applying um, through a school or a college and if you're applying as an individual, which is what I did, when I applied for graduate entry medicine, then in this case you will uh, there's an option on the UCAS form that sends an email to your referee. So you've got to add your uh, referee's email there, and they will get like a form to fill in about your uh, about yourself really. And then once they're done, they can submit it, and then UCAS will um, use that as a referee. UCAS will also ask you how you plan to fund your studies. But they don't uh, manage their own finance applications. So for on if you're from the well from England, because um, I, I think it's different if you're from Scotland, Wales, and other Ireland. But for England, you go through Student Finance England, and they'll ask you a bunch of questions, um, things like your household income. So they uh, and if you're studying, if you're going to be studying in London, so the amount of money you get will be uh, vary. Um, so there's two process to this. Um, one is that you get the maintenance loan. That amount of money is dependent on your household income and whether you are studying in London or outside of London. I think when I was looking at it, I got around £2,000 more if I wanted to live in London. But outside of London, I just got like, the basic amount possible. Um, usually, for those who parental income is below a certain threshold um you get given more loan to cover like everything because the you know the student parents uh, understands that some parents are not financially sufficient to support the child um yeah so it, uh, look into the other process is applying for the tuition fee loan now this money gets paid directly to the university once you've enrolled uh, you'll get your maintenance loan a bit later on, but usually before when you have to pay your uh, first rent instalment. Again, make sure this is something that you apply for early on. Now, obviously, it's difficult if you've not actually heard back from your university yet, uh, but you can change your student finance um, information even before you, even a few weeks before you start your course. But it's just, just be warned that you may not get your money in time to pay your rent. Again, um, UCAS has a website that explains a bit more about the funding and finance aspects of universities. Uh, if you're from England, do check out the Student Finance website, uh, Student Finance England website, uh, and I'm sure you, your questions will be answered there. So you can also give, uh, again, back to the UCAS.com application cycle now, um, you can also give a parent or guardian or advisor nominated access. Um, this is if you want them to be able to speak to UCAS on your behalf. UCAS can discuss your application with your uh, parent, guardian, or nominated, nominated access. But obviously, you can't share your login details. UCAS can't share your login details for security reason. So the third option now is to add all of your educational history. So you got to enter all of your qualifications from your secondary school, so from high school onwards. Um, this includes whether you have the result um, or if you're still awaiting exam uh, results. So this just makes sure that universities know that you meet their entry requirements. But sometimes the universities can make a offer even if you don't have the exact grades you're asking for. Uh, again, if you've got any questions about entry requirements, speak to the U university uh, before you apply. Because they are the ones who set the um, entry requirements every year, UCAS doesn't have any influence on that. So if you're um, waiting for any result, uh, there there are um, exam results that the UCAS can um, process and forward on to the universities. If your uh, if any of your qualifications aren't on the list, 
you can the list about all the qualifications they accept, then you still need to add them to your, uh, your applications, right? But um, you got to then remember that you need to send the results on to your chosen universities when you get them. So UCAS won't do it for you. So usually like one, if you've done an exam like um, A-levels, for example, or BTECs, uh, that results, if you've not got it yet, um, the exam board from those results will be sent to UCAS. Um, and then what UCAS will then do is once they got it, they will then send it to your universities. So they do it automatically for you, so you don't really have to worry about it. But that's if your university, that's if your course that you did, so like BTEX, A-levels, A-levels, is on the UCAS list, then it should be fine. If it's not on the list, then you have to send the course uh, results to your universities once you get them. So, yeah. Um, if you started studying at a university and you didn't finish the course, you still need to enter these details, including the start and finish date, and you got to say that you didn't receive any qualifications there. If you're studying for a qualification or waiting results, you got to make sure your referee adds your predicted grades on your application. Some universities and colleges will not consider your application without this is key if you want to apply for uh, the competitive courses uh, you need to make sure your referee adds your predator course predator grades on there so that you can um, so you can hopefully hear back about whether you received a place or not so it's really important that you enter the right qualifications on your application um, because there's a lot of like different different qualifications that there are out there and um, you got to make sure that you put the correct one in. Um, again, if you don't know what qual qualification you're talking to, just if you're taking, just talk to your school and they should hopefully be able to advise you. Now, if you're coming from international uh, and EU countries, you're going to make sure that you add as much detail as you can for the on the UCAS website, so that including the grades and the results. So without enough information, universities may struggle for to make a decision. Um, so for example, like um, A levels, if you're studying at a, like an international school uh, outside of the UK, you can say that you're doing the A levels, but it might be like a different, uh, like an international version of it. Uh, this is very true for the baccalaureate. Um, so just like make sure that you add the correct. Um, qualifications in and like as much as you can. So um, qualifications are also listed by name and country so like you can choose the qualifications that you're doing from countries like like I said A-levels might be uh, something that's listed in other countries as well so just make sure that you pick your country and you say you did A-levels in this country. Um, but don't worry if yours isn't there you can just add it on to the other box. Uh, you will also potentially have to send you your proof of results in certificates or transcripts. So UCAS can send some of the results, so like the International Baccalaureate or the IB for short. But for like the other international qualifications, you will have to send them to the university yourself. So different universities have different policies on how they want to receive results. Some might ask for them as soon as you apply. Others might just wait until they done their initial assessment of your application before you um, before they ask to see any proof of your results. Um, so, like I said, you also need to like have your certificates ready. Sometimes just to make sure that you have the uh, like your certificate, your uh, exam grades are accepted. If you don't have your certificates, make sure you contact your school um, to get them. If you still can't accept, if you still can't find a certificate because you've not been in education for many many years you can uh, apply the course providers that you're applying you can contact the course providers you're applying for and discuss your options you might be able to get a replacement certificate as well from the exam board that you did your qualification in um, again this is also depend on like what kind of qualification you're doing so for like access courses um, there's like a few different access courses so make sure you uh, enter the correct one that you're um, a, a correct one that you're uh, applying for. So the next step in applying for your uh, uh, red 
well plan for universe in the uk is completing your employment history so if you've had any paid jobs whether it's full-time or part-time you got to make sure that you can enter the details for up to five of them so you're going to include like everything like your company name addresses job descriptions and the start finish date for any unpaid or voluntary work don't include that in the employment history you could mention that in your personal statement, which I will mention now, mention later on, sorry. And um, if you've not had any paid work experience, just leave the section blank and mark it as complete. So the fifth part of applying for university in the UK um, is to choosing your courses. So unlike some countries, you can only actually apply to do five courses in the uk there's no preference order and your universities won't see where else you've applied until after you reply to any offers you get so if you're applying for medicine dentistry vet or veterinary science or veterinary medicine um, you can only apply to maximum four courses in any of those so you can't apply for medicine and veterinary and dentistry in more in one cycle in one application cycle you can only apply for four in all of them um you can add the choices of the different deadline date but don't forget that you only have five choices into five choices in total now for the fifth choice um usually a lot of students apply for a um a degree program that's very similar to medicine so things like medical science there's biomedical sciences biochemistry um things like that that are very similar to medicine you can apply for that as well but you can only apply for four courses if you want to apply for medicine veterinary dentistry so um also like if you want to apply for oxford or cambridge make sure that you only apply for one course at either oxford university or in cambridge university there are, are a few uh, exceptions so if you're a graduate at the start of the course and you're applying for graduate medicine at the University of Cambridge, you could then apply to medicine at Cambridge as well as graduate medicine at Oxford. Um, but you might need to um, complete an additional application form to apply, in which case just visit the Oxford University and Oxford, uh, Cambridge University websites for more information. Um, if you're thinking of deferring your application, make sure that you check with the university that they accept your deferred entry for the course. Um, they may not always offer the course at the following year. They may change it or they may prefer students not to have a gap year before they start the degree. So make sure you, you know, again, talk to your university about deferring your entry. Now, once you've chosen all of your um, choices and you're happy with the course you want to do and uh, where you want to do it, you got to write a personal statement. Now, this is the uh, part of the application where you can write in your own style. It's your chance to tell the universities and colleges why you like to study with them and what skills and experience you have. It's got to be at least a thousand characters long but you have up to 4,000 characters, so 47 lines, um, which comes first to actually write about yourself. So minimum 1,000 characters long, but maximum 4,000 characters in total, or 47 lines, whichever comes first. So characters just in means that you have to include all the spaces and all the punctuations like full stop, comma, exclamation mark uh, in your character. So you've got to be very, very picky about how you right and how you come across so UCAS recommends uh, starting the statement in Microsoft Word uh, and then pasting it into your application um, after you completed your statement uh, the application doesn't actually have a spell check so while you're in your application make sure you hit save to avoid losing your work and like all the grammar and um, spelling is checked before you Submit. Um, if also make sure that you reread the work, preview it before you complete the section. Have someone else preview it, uh, preview it as well before you submit it. 
Now, an FYI about personal statements, you uh, had to write it in your own words because UCAS uses a plagiarizing software, which means that if you copied someone else's uh, UCAS um, statement, or if you found something from online and you cut, copied and pasted it into your statement, um, UCAS will detect that and will report your account. So it means that you might not be able to apply for university in the future. So don't do that. Write it yourself. Um, if you're really, really struggling, there are resources out there like listen to YouTube videos. You can also send your personal statement to me. I can have a look at it uh, for free and point you in the correct direction. I won't write it for you, but I can offer like help uh, and hints um, on whether you're writing in the in, in a uh, good way that you guys will like. So once you've submitted uh, completed everything, you will be shown your full application. So you make sure you review it and you make any edits. Um, once you've done that, you'll be asked to read and agree to the declaration which allows UCAS to process the information and send it to your chosen universities. Now the next and last step is making sure you're getting a reference and you're paying the application fee as well. So again, the reference is coming from your school or an advisor or professional who knows you academically. If you need, um, if you're applying with your school, make sure you put your password down so you guys can link your application and your school can also like check your application for you before you can submit it. Um, also that like, gives them a chance to submit your application using the password. Uh, everyone needs a reference unless you get a permission from your chosen universities and colleges to like um, make sure you don't need a reference. I've not, I don't know any situation where you won't need your reference, uh, but if you do know of it, just um, give me a shout out. Um, you cannot complete your application, uh, you can't submit it rather until you've chosen your referee and you complete it. Uh, your chosen referee has completed and add your reference to the application. So I mentioned the application fee. When you when you finish with everything and you, you're ready to submit, you got to pay a fee. The application fee for the 2022 entry uh, was £22 for a single choice or £26.50 for more than one choice. The application for 2023 entry is £22.50 for a single choice or 27 for more than one choice. So if you filled five choices, you would be paying £27, basically. Um, but if you're only applying for one course, you just have to pay the £22.50, basically. So if so again, just like a couple of pointers. So if you're applying through university, sorry, applying for university through school, college or center, um, the school will let you know whether and when you should pay them so they can pay you cuts. So you, you definitely have to pay your application. Um, alternatively, they just tell you to like pay you cast directly by credit or debit card. And you do this before your, before the reference is added to your application. The school, college, or center will then send your application to UCAS on your behalf. Uh, they might even give you an earlier deadline to complete your application than the UCAS deadline that you're aiming to meet. So this just gives the school or the center or the college enough time to arrange the reference for you. If you're um, applying as an individual, just after the reference is added, you pay by credit or debit card online and then you submit the application to you. Um, sorry, applying application to UCAS. Um, like I mentioned, if you're applying as an individual, uh, make sure you send the UCAS link. You'll be able to do it with the application to your referee, so they can fill out your reference and then submit it for you. Um, usually, you can't actually see what your what the referee is writing about you, but if you ask your referee directly, they may show you. If you're um, applying from prison, um, you will need an academic reference as well as a statement from the prison authorities saying that you're suitable and available for the start date. 
um, if you have no fixed address in applying, you need to, you will actually need to provide an address on your UCAS application as well as, as well as your application for your student finance. So it's, it's important that you give an address that you can collect mail from. Um, so this is specifically for those who have no fixed address. So if you can't afford the application fees, just speak to your school or college first if you have difficulty. Um, most schools will cover the cost if, uh, of the application fee if they can't, if you can't afford this. Um, you can also contact your chosen university um, directly and they may have schemes to help pay for your fees. Um, there are some certain circumstances where other source of financial help is possible. So for example, if you've been in care, your local authority could cover the cost for you. Again, contact your personal advisor um, or any advice service and they might be able to help you. If you're a carer, you can contact your local authority as well and ask for an assessment of your needs um, to help you plan for university or college. Uh, if there's any like local young carer services, you can ask them as well for support. If you're an asylum seeker or a refugee, um, Refugee Education UK has an overview of grants and uh, grant providers that can help support young people's education, including the cost of fees, travel, resources and equipment. If you're applying from prison as well, there are the local authority or the youth of one offending team could help you with this. Um, there are other organisations as well, like the Longford Trust, Women in Prison, as well as Prisoners Education Trust that can help you with your um, fees. So that's just a general overview about the UCAS system. Now, um, if you're applying for courses other than medicine, dentistry or veterinary science, or to like Oxford and Cambridge University, you have a lot of time to do some research uh, and make your choices. This is for the 2023 entry, obviously. For those who are thinking of university, but it's going to be uh, in the future, you obviously have more time. So I hope this podcast uh, episode has been useful in helping you decide whether you want to apply for the university in the UK using the UK system. So this is uh, this message is basically for the international students. But for home students as well, UCAS is the only way you can apply through university. So do definitely check it out. It has a lot of information on there about how to apply for universities, like loads of different information. And the website keeps changing every year as well. So like, um, just make sure that you take your time to actually go through the website before you can apply because it can be really, really fiddly. So yeah, so I hope this helps. Um, if you have any queries, you can um, I'll put my contact details on this podcast so you can message me through that and I will see you guys uh, in another episode and uh, thank you for listening to my episode